Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 14. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, thy brethren, Jewish, Hebrews, even thy brethren, I'm assuming thy brethren, the Jewish people, even thy brethren may be a close family. Again, if that's the case, we're running to a parallelism with Jeremiah. Remember, Jer Jeremiah was of Antioch, a city of the priests. And Antioch wanted Jeremiah dead. The men of thy kindred. I think that goes more close rather than rather than Israel but family thy kindred and all the house of Israel holy so Ezekiel looks like he's got the Jew he's got his family and he's got the whole house of Israel against him like Jeremiah so I shouldn't be upset when I've got three or four people or five maybe six that are upset with me at the farmers market and I got seven eight nine or ten people who are happy Ezekiel and Jeremiah are men that everybody hates them of their family of their hometown and Jesus Christ was not wanted by his own hometown and a remarkable thing that when you read the Gospels it said that when Jesus was in his own hometown God manifested in the flesh he was prevented of doing any miracles because of their unbelief God was prevented I had a man today at the farmer's market say, I heard your message, I enjoyed your message. No one said that to Jeremiah. No one said that to Ezekiel. Nebuchadnezzar came up to Daniel and said, Hey, you know what? I appreciate what you said. Shadrach, Meshach, and Nico, I appreciate your stand for your God. Paul was complimented in, in many places and he was harassed in other places. Jesus Christ was complimented. He gave him the blind to see, he gave the deaf to hear, the, the lepers were cleansed, and the dead were raised. But where was the compliments at the cross? They are unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Get you far from the Lord. Unto us is the land given in possession. And when you got you got a bunch of people here, the higher ups, the nose up in the air, and hey, get out of here. Give up on the Lord. We're here in the land. We haven't been taken captive. It's our land. Is that remarkable? So It's, I'm trying to think that, that Paul said, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And there are people out there, we're going to see two errors. They got the prosperity gospel. That's not scripture. Therefore they therefore say, say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Although I have cast them far off from among their brethren, those who are in Babylon, although I have scattered them among the countries, and there are Jews that have what who weren't captured, they're not in their homeland, they've gone to Moab, they're going to Ammon, they're going to wherever they could go. 
Yet will I be to them a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Daniel is in Babylon, and he's aided by God. Nehemiah and Ezra are in Babylon, and God gives them great mercy. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, I will gather you from the people, and assemble you out of the countries where I have, where you have been scattered. I will give you the land of Israel. So there's that promise of God. God says, I promise you will get the land. And they got it in the Ezra and Nehemiah, but, you know, there's been so many wars. And they got it in World War One. The land was prepared for the people. World War Two, the people were prepared for the land, but that's not their land. All the sanctions of the United Nations in America, will you be happy and give up this land and move the walls for the PLO and, and give up the lands for the Jordan and be happy to this people? And there's Roman Catholics going around in the city and there are Muslims in the city and there are Arabians in the, in the city and there's... There's coming a time that that land will be their land, officially their land, and their land will be ruled by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. And all the enemies of the Jews will be destroyed. And they shall come thither. They shall take away all detestable things thereof, and all the abominations thereof from them. You can't say that was done in Ezra and Nehemiah. You can't say that's today. You got sodomite Jews today. That's an abomination. You got Jews practicing the Passover in America. They're not going to Jerusalem three times a year. That's an abomination. You got where the Temple Mount is to be. You got the Dumb of the Rock. That's an abomination. You got Jewish people today, even among the Orthodox, they don't even believe in God. They don't want to have it. They're not looking for the Messiah no more. Many of them are not. They want that land without God. And they'll sell that land, which God told them, don't sell the land. That's not going to happen when Jesus comes. He says, I will give you the land of Israel. Take that message to the United Nations. Take that message to the, to the Middle East, where in their public school system, Israel is not even recognized on the maps. And they shall come thither, and they shall take away all the testimonies. Everything that is wicked that the Jews have done, everything that is wicked in that land of the heathen. Detestable thing. You won't have any Roman Catholics showing you the Roman Catholic Jesus of the Holy Land experience. That Baptists are so stupid. Oh, we went to the we went to the cathedral of Jesus. We went to the, the, the Roman Catholic place of this, and we went to go see the relic of that, and we that's a bunch of Roman Catholic crap. Are you telling me that is the holy city with the dumb of the rock and the Catholic priest running around and the Arabians giving Baptist a a show of Jesus in the land? Did you ask those Roman Catholics, do they believe in the death, burial, and resurrection without the wafer? Do they, would they say to you as a Bible-believing Christian that we take your tradition, we throw it in the garbage can, we don't acknowledge your priest, we don't acknowledge the Mass, and they would call you anathema. And you tell the Arabians, Allah is a dead God. You can't even bring a Bible into the Allah nations as we go over there and defend in peaceful operation. Our troops can't even bring the Bible over there and stupid Baptists go, I went to the Holy Land experience. I went to see where Jesus died. Did he die in Jerusalem or did he die outside the gates of Jerusalem? He died in Jerusalem. Yeah.
Show me in the Bible where you're supposed to visit the Holy Land. Or I can show you in the Bible you're supposed to preach the gospel. Show me in the Bible where you're supposed to build the Ark Encounter in Tennessee. And then they sucker you in paying for a mission to go see something that the Bible only speaks about two or three chapters. I've seen pictures of the thing. You know, this is where no one kept the animals. And this is how the... That's not what the Bible says. Where the hell did you get that crap? Now you got people believing in deceptive lies because that's not what the Bible says. You are a liar. And I don't know, and I could be wrong about this, but I bet you they got someone dressed up as Moses walking around there. I mean, Noah. If they have no address, I walk up to them, I want to see your ID. And it better say no, if not, I'm calling the police and I'm calling Homeland Security. I'm going to have you arrested for identity theft. Don't you bite me to the Ark Encounter, because if, if there's a man that says he's Noah running around, I want to see his ID. And the ID better not be from the United States of America. Because the United States of America wasn't around in Noah's time. You can take all that crap and throw it in the garbage can. That's a lot of the seeing days of let's make money off God. I know a Christian made all kinds of, you know, Jesus is the reason for the season and sold it. No, I'm a Christian because I sell all this crap. Crap! I'm allowed to say crap. Abominations. When Jesus Christ comes, he's going to get rid of all those abominations. They're going to take their idols and their images, they're going to throw it to the moles and the bats. Big fat Buddha statues will be thrown in the mountains. Thank God I'll be behind Jesus, literally. And when Jesus Christ comes and he takes them into the land like, like Joshua, he will defend and he'll get rid of all the enemies of God, which Joshua and Israel did not do. Joshua judges. And if Joshua and judges did what they were supposed to do, why did uh, King Saul and David had problems with the Philistines? They were supposed to be eliminated. If they did what they were supposed to do, why was one of the disciples of Jesus a Canaanite? The very fact that Jesus had a disciple of Cana, a Canaanite, showed the nation, you were disobedient to me. There'll be no witchcraft, there'll be no Harry Potter, there'll be no seances, there'll be no horoscope, there'll be no idols, no images, no aids of worship, no mass. Glory to God. And I will give them one heart, unity, no more Israel north and Judah south. They will still be 12 tribes, but there'll be one together in unity and in peace. That's not happened today. You got the Orthodox, you got the conservative Jews, you got the modern Jews, you got the atheistic Jews, you got the Sodomite Jews, you got the Catholic Jews, you got Jews who are not even Jews. And you got Jews that will conform to the to the Muslims because they want peace. You got the Jews who will give in to the United Nations because they want peace. You got American Jews. This is future. Notice how he says, I'll give them one heart, not one mind. Jeremiah said, the heart is wicked to split. Who, who can who can trust it? Who can believe it? But God will give them a clean heart to look. He said, I will put a new spirit within you. That new spirit will be the Holy Spirit. They don't have that Holy Spirit today. Because you can't get the Holy Spirit unless you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And there are plenty of Jews over there today who are not saved. They don't believe in the Messiah. They don't believe in Jesus Christ. They don't have the Holy Spirit. 
They got the spirit of rebellion. They got the spirit of Satan. And one day that's going to end. This is a future tense of the second advent and the millennial reign of Jesus. And when somebody comes up to you with the replacement theology that God is all done with Israel, what do you do with verse 19? And you know what they'll do? Well, that happened back Nehemiah. That happened back... No, that's future. Because ever since Rehoboam and Jeroboam, that, not Rehoboam, uh, uh, no, oh no, um, can't think, Solomon's son, Rehoboam, I think, may got the name, but Solomon's son, when the nation split into two, they had never, 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 never got together. Matter of fact, when, when, when Assyria comes in and takes Israel into captivity, you don't hear of Israel no more. It's all Judah. And before the captivity of Israel, you got uh, uh, Reuben and Gad and half tribe Manasseh who are on the wrong side of Jordan. They go into captivity first. Then Israel north, then Judah. We're coming up to Judah again, the captivity, which we already done the captivity in Jeremiah. When Jesus Christ comes, he's going to bring them back into unity like they were in Joshua's day. And they're not going to have a mixed multitude. There'll be pure Jews. And there'll be some who had helped the Jews unknowingly but they're not going to be accounted with the Jews there's going to be the church which is behind Jesus the Christian there's going to be Israel and that's their land and there's going to be visiting Gentiles that help the Jews in the tribulation period that one heart and I'll put a new spirit in you that's future and I will take the stony heart out of your flesh. Jeremiah and Ezekiel, they're, they're, they're wicked. They're, they're stiff-necked. They won't listen. They're, they're hard. They're, they're flint. They're, God's going to take that. He's going to break them. And I've dealt with some Jewish people, and they are. They are stubborn. They will get you mad, and you got, oh boy, Lord, I'm going to back off. And I will give them a heart of flesh. They're not going to be super, you know, scientific androids. There will be human, his, his, Israel, Hebrew, Israelites, Jewish people. In unity of Israel and Judah with the Holy Spirit in them. And they'll be humans. They will die in a millennium. But a very old age. It's future. That they may walk in my statues. Uh oh. In the millennia. There's still the law. In the tribulation period, there's the law, and I had a preacher tell me that's wrong. What's the temple for? Why did Jesus pray in the tribulation period, pray that your flight be not on the Sabbath? You know, if there's one thing the Jews should thank the Gentiles in the church for today, though they obey, or try to obey, they don't obey foot. But during the church age period, they're not under the law. Once the church goes in the tribulation, you're under the law, the Jews. The temple will be there. There will be God's temple in the millennium. We'll get that in Ezekiel. There will be priests. There will be sacrifices in the millennium. I don't know what's going to happen in the new earth.
keep my ordinances. That's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. That's future. And do them. They're not doing them now. They didn't do them during the time of Jesus. They didn't do it at the time of Nehemiah. And they sure are not doing them now. Nehemiah is ripping his hair out literally because they have married women who are not Jewish, never mind their, their, their own tribe. They are back in Nehemiah. They're back on, this, on the Sabbath. The, the gates are open. They're doing business. Not in the millennium. The law is coming back. Satan will have these churches and, and people fooled that the law is today. I'm not under the law. They shall be my people and I will be their God. Of course, those in replacement theology that God's all finished with the Jew has put that verse, it's already happened. Now God's so angry with them, he's done with them. That will happen when Jesus Christ returns. When we pick up the Jews... I believe Sarah Petra, at that moment, God's going to adopt them. He's going to marry them as his bride. The bride of Jesus Christ is the church. The bride of God is Israel. Remember the woman that Joshua picked up when they were in Jericho, the cursed city? You know what, you know what Israel is called in the tribulation period? She's called the cursed wicked city. They spoke about Jericho and the walls that came down, the rocks. Well, the cell of Peter is the city we pick up the Jew, the rocks. But as for them, the ones who are, you know, we're God's people, He's given us to the land. As for them, whose heart walketh after the heart of detestable things. No, it's not the mind. Jeremiah again said, the heart is just wicked. You're involved in idolatry. You're involved in Tammuz. You're involved in Esther. You're involved in dead. You're involved in, in, in the Halloween's coming up. You're involved with, with, with seances. You're involved with the sun, sun moon, and stars. You're involved with the sunrise service. You're involved in wickedness and new age or witchcraft or Islam or, or Buddha or whatever it is you are involved with. It is with your heart. And a psychiatrist can't clean your mind because the problem's not with your mind. It's with your heart. You need to be born again. You need to be cleansed. You need to confess for God to forgive and cleanse you. Psychiatry is dealing with the wrong part of your body. A, a pastor of a King James Bible believing church that is saved, that is called by God to preach and minister the gospel is to deal with the heart of people as the Holy Spirit deals with the heart of the people drawing them to God and preaching the truth of the Bible that we will confess our wicked heart and its sins that we may be right with God that Jesus said, I don't care if you wash your hands, for out of the heart comes adultery, fornication, and a whole big list of sins that Paul says the works of the flesh. Well, their mind is not subtle. They're crazy. That's not the case. You've got to come to Jesus with your heart. You've got to come to God with a repentant heart. Repentance is thrown out of the churches today. 
and, and we were in the church, and it was Valentine's Day, and they had a big old heart with the people's name, and the pastor got up there wearing an artificial heart on his... That's, get out of kindergarten. It makes me mad. I'm in college, and I got kindergarten stuff going on. You know what that heart is? The icon of that heart symbol? That's not what your heart looks like. That heart is a symbol of a naked woman sitting down and leaving the print of her hiney and the other side of her body in that print. That's the heart symbol. The, the two big things are her rear end and... Look it up. And then go to your pastors. Say, Pastor, why did we have a woman's naked bottom in our church? And he'll look at you like, huh? Have you been listening to Styling? You don't need to listen to him. He doesn't. I don't know who Styling is, but I did a Google. <laughs> did a Google. One day in the millennium, we will see the nation of Israel and their sins are gone. I am going to see that as a born-again Bible-believing Christian. I am going to see, see, Jesus is not my king. He's my savior. He's my, my, my husband. I am going to see God call by Jesus, Israel together under unity. He's going to give them the Holy Spirit. He's going to cleanse them of all their sins, which the Catholic Church can't do. He's going to settle them in the land. He's going to kick the United Nations in their butt and in their tushy and cast them into the lake of fire that burns forever. He's going to tell the President of the United States, I don't care about your oil. If you've been an enemy of Israel, get out of my view. I don't know you. Israel, come on in. Church, come on in. And those nations that helped Israel in the tribulation, come on in. What do you mean helping Israel? I don't know what we did. And that's in the book of Matthew. You know what the Gospel of Matthew is about? It's all about Israel. Not the church. Gentiles that help the Jews in the tribulation period, and they don't even know it. We're all going to go into the millennium, and we're all going to witness Israel reborn. Nicodemus, yeah, you need to be born again. Huh? Are you somebody important in Israel? I forget how God put it. You know, God is Jesus. Aren't you a master in Israel and you don't know what I'm talking about being born again? That's what's going to happen to Israel. As a nation, they will be reborn. They will be satisfied. They will be pleasing before God. And I'm telling you, Wu, when we get to that land, if I get inheritance, I don't know. I may get a little plot. I, I hope I at least get a little garden in Israel. I don't want that much. Faithful as I've been to the Lord, I probably won't get nothing. But at least I get a little piece of land where I can have some tomatoes that I'm going to plant the seeds. And five minutes later, it's going to be big, fat tomatoes about the size of the pumpkins. Where do you get that? I get that in the Old Testament. Thank you very much. You see, he gonna be one's gonna be tilling the ground, one's gonna be dropping the seed, and right behind him's gonna be somebody picking the crops. That's in the millennium. That's the curse removed, except for Mr. Snake. Mr. Snake still gets the curse. And you don't even know what I'm talking about because it's all in the Old Testament. And this is all around Israel getting their sins removed, becoming part as one is unity, getting a new heart, getting the, the Holy Spirit within them, getting in their land, Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Oh, Jesus is the King of the church. All right, where's the wonderful tomatoes? He's not king now.
He's going to be king later. Pilate told you he's the king of the Jews, not the king of the church. And they're abomination. And it's all through. There'll be no more sodomite Jews. There'll be no more sodomites at all. I will recompense their ways upon their own heads. Oh, you get what you deserve. You don't want that accounting. You don't want God to pull you up and say, okay, let's check it out. And you're going to get what you deserve. I thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Even when I stand to judgment seat of Christ, all that I failed Jesus, all that I did in the flesh, it's going to be wood, hay, and stuff. It's going to burn up. It's going to be a loss. It ain't going to be as severe. You know, the book, the, uh, the Revelation tells us at the great white throne judgment, the books were open and they were judged out of the things that were written. Ooh, you're going to. Jesus said every idle word. It's going to be enough written in those books against you. You're going to spend all eternity in the lake of fire. To pay for all your sins that Jesus paid for. Now listen, Israel is God's people. Be beyond a shadow of a doubt. But I'm not going to be so foolish to say there are no Jewish people in hell. There are. There are Jewish people today in Israel who are dying. And they're going to hell because they have not put their faith and trust in Jesus. I'm going to assume that that rich man Jesus told us about in the, in the Gospel of Luke is Jewish. John the Baptist said, don't tell me because you got Abraham as your father. I can raise these stones up to be." Today, the Jew needs to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, and if he doesn't, he's going to die and go to hell. But they're coming up to the tribulation period, they're coming up to the millennium, they're going to have to rely on those works. They're going to have to rely on those laws which Satan wants to mess with people today. Then did the cherubims lift up their wings? Oh, there are those cherubims again. They've been there the whole time. Now, I wonder who saw these sheriff folks. You want to talk about a UFO? And the wheels beside them. And the glory of the God of Israel was over them above. And the glory of God went up from the midst of the city and stood upon the mountain, which is on the east side of the city. I think that would be Carmel, but I can't be... To, let me see if I can look it up here real quick. I think that would be Carmel. Mount Olive. Mount, Mount of Olive. I got the wrong meal. Carmel. Mount, the Mount of Olive. Where Jesus was at. Afterwards. So after all this, God departs from Jerusalem and goes to the Mount Olivet. Afterwards, the Spirit, here comes the Holy Spirit again, took me up. Ezekiel's going here, there, over there, over here by the Spirit. Ezekiel did not need wings. And brought me in a vision by the Spirit of God into Chaldea. He's back in Babylon. He's been in Jerusalem, now he's back in, knows the capital S. To them of the captivity. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach. So the vision that I had seen went up from me. Everything that we just read, when the Holy Spirit brought him into Jerusalem. To the temple. Then I spank all unto them. And I spank unto them of the captivity, all those Jews that are in Babylon, all the things the Lord has shown me. And then we'll have a new chapter. But Ezekiel, whatever 
God spoke everything we read and studied. Ezekiel went back to Babylon. He says, "Hey, listen. This is what's going on. This is going on." 